Hi, Lucinda from Listen, Love, Pray. This video is all about this book that we've been studying for the last three weeks, Drop the Rock. It's about removing our character defects or our shortcomings. And it kind of goes along, well, it does go along step six and seven of those 12 steps of AA or NA. Um, and step six is became entirely ready to have God remove our defects of character. And step seven is ask God to remove all of our shortcomings. Now, a review of class one. So the book is about letting go of our pride and our self-centered ways or what the book termed our self-defeating ways. And you know, there's so many other things that can feel like defeating in our lives and we don't wanna be self-defeating. So we wanna get rid of those things that cause us to feel defeated. We learned four things to help us examine ourselves. You know, God knows our character defects, right? And he wants us to walk in the freedom that he has planned for us. And he constantly is beckoning us, but somehow we're just kind of blind and stubborn. Um, so we need to settle ourselves down and to examine ourselves and become aware, acknowledge, or maybe even step out of denial of the things that are self-sabotage, that are character defects. So four ways to help with self-examination. Ritual, prayer, meditation, and cleansing. Then we looked at the seven deadly sins. Now, do you know the seven deadly sins? The first one begins with the letter P and it's a really big one. What do you think? What do you think that is? You're right if you guessed pride. Pride is, well, it's the opposite of humility. And remember step six says, became entirely ready to have God remove our character defects. And that requires a big measure of humility. Now in our first class, someone asked, what's the definition of humility? And there was a really good one that someone had recalled hearing somewhere and it was, not thinking of yourself less, not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. Not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. And that is a great definition. Another person said God, following God's plan, submitting to his will. Um, so here are the seven deadly sins. See if you have any. Pride, envy, gluttony, slop, covetousness, lust, and anger. You might have one of those, or you might have one of a zillion other character defects. You know, in the back of this book on page 101, there's a whole list of them. I'll read just a couple. And you know, get a pencil and paper and write down um, a character defect, identify it. Dishonest, fear, pride, inconsiderate. Greed, anger, envy, impatient, intolerant, resentful, hate, self-pity, hmm, self-justification, self-condemnation, or the reverse, self-importance, suspicion, doubt, disrespect. There's a whole slew of character defects. Um, so take a moment and write down one or two of your character defects that you would like to get rid of, that you would like to ask God to remove. The second class, we looked at the fact that we wanna have to change because of a desire for a new life, not out of fear of our old one, a desire for a new life. So we have these character defects and yes, maybe some of them do make us a little afraid, but we wanna have this new thing this new godly thing that he wants for us too. Those godly traits like, well, they're the fruits of the spirit, right? Love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. And here's some others. Do you want to move towards something like honesty, courage, considerate, calm, Grateful. Do you want to have moderation? Patience. 
Self-acceptance, hmm, that's one to think about. Do you wanna be self-accepting? Modesty, trust, faith, charity, respect. There's a whole lot of things that you might wanna to move toward. So go ahead and write underneath where you wrote your character defect, write what your desire is for a new, godly, healthy character trait for yourself. Everybody have one or two or 10? So this is class number three. And here we look really closely at step seven, which is humbly asked him to remove our shortcomings. So the key ingredient in step seven is humility. And you know, an aspect of humility is being teachable. Having an open mind is very important. And it says in the book on page 57, we are as humble as we are grateful. We're as a humble, as we are grateful. So let's take a moment and rank ourselves on a scale from one to 10. 10 is being really, really high. How teachable are you? Are you really teachable? Then you're a 10. If you're so-so, maybe you're a five, or maybe you're not teachable at all. Maybe you know it all. That would be a zero. On a scale from one to 10, rank yourself on how humble you are. How humble are you? And then on a scale from one to 10, write how grateful you are. 10 being really, really grateful. So take a look at those three numbers that you just wrote down. Are they different? Many people say, yeah, those numbers are different. And I wonder why. Perhaps those differences in numbers may give a clue to one of our character defects. Moving on, in developing humility, we are faced once again with an active surrender. Look those great words to put together, active surrender. Love that. In asking God to remove our shortcomings, we must move and act in a manner that reflects our willingness and our surrender. So we have a part. We have to ask God. Now, can God remove our character defects without us asking? Yes, he can. But again, there's something about stepping out of denial, turning to God for help and asking him. You know, all throughout the Bible, it tells us to ask. Doesn't it say pray continuously? Doesn't it say not seek, ask? all throughout the Bible. Let's step into asking God to remove those character defects. So what do you need to surrender to God and ask for his help? What do you need to surrender to God? Maybe you have a lot of anxiety. Do you need to surrender that to God and ask for his help to remove the character defect from your life? So as I was thinking and researching a little more on this step, I came across a website, National Association of Christian Recovery. Now, just for this particular topic that I was seeking, it had some great stuff. I am not condoning the whole website. I don't know the whole website, but here's what National Association of Christian Recovery said about step seven. They defined humbly. Humbly, humility is the spiritual foundation of step seven, but what is humility? The prophet Isaiah provides a helpful image of the humility we seek in step seven. He said, we are the clay, you, God, are the potter. That's in chapter 64, verse eight. The clay can only become a useful pot. Think of a lump of clay. It's a lump, right? It can only become a useful pot with the help of the potter. We are God's creation. God is the potter. And practicing humility teaches us to accept the role of the clay 
Practicing humility teaches us to accept the role of the clay and let go of the attempts to be the potter. Here's another thing this article talked about, about the ask, asking him. And the idea of asking for something may seem really awkward to us. You know, we, if we have so many character defects and we keep trying to get rid of them and do better and we keep falling back, we may feel a little ashamed to come to God again, admit our wrongs and ask him to help us. Why can't we do it ourselves? But he's okay with us asking. Here's a, a, a scripture from Matthew 7, 9 and 11. Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know, that's what it says in the scripture, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give, give good gifts to those who ask him? Asking is a necessary part of the process of change. And then here's the last thing from this website. What we ask for in step seven is the removal of our shortcomings. We don't ask for help in adapting to them or for help in managing them. We don't ask for help in continuing to live with them. We want them removed. And that's what we ask for. And you know, we, we might have spent many years developing these character defects. Some of our requests for removal will happen like that, but probably not many. Others might require patience and perseverance in working those steps and becoming entirely ready to have them removed. Can't hold on to just a little tiny bit of it and have it entirely removed. God can be trusted to do a good job because he cares about his work and he cares about us. First Peter five verses six and seven, humble yourselves therefore under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety upon him because he cares for you. There's this great testimony on pages 59 to 61. It's Joan's testimony. And she says, I gained an ability to move through my fear. Just, just imagine that as a visual. Move through the fear and look toward God. Thank God that by working through the steps and opening up to any amount of humility I was capable of, things began to change. So even if you have a little tiny bit of humility, things can begin to change. I've come to know the seventh step as an action step that moves one into humility. By asking, we become humble. And the more we ask and open up, the more humility we can receive. Did you ever think of the fact that we receive humility? We don't just drum it up ourselves or really try to be humble. We receive that the more we ask for it. Lots of things, tidbits for future thought. Page 66, great sentence. Step seven has the power of disconnecting from the old self. And you know, the old self is in the Bible. And I was very excited to, to look at Ephesians 4, 22 through 26. Here it is. In reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self which is being corrupted in, in accordance with the lusts of deceit and that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new self, which is in the likeness of God and has been created in righteousness and holiness of truth. We are laying aside the old self. We are asking God to remove our character defects. And then we're going to be putting on with God's help, the new self. There's another great testimony on page 67 through 69 that was about a woman who had worked the 12 steps, I believe, as someone who struggled with alcohol, but now applied them to a financial difficulty in her life. And, and she didn't know why she couldn't get rid of this financial difficulty. She tried. But when she saw it in, the, in a new perspective, in, in light of step seven, it made all the difference. She said, 
I knew I had better turn to God for help. I fell on my knees and said, God, I need help. I can't handle this by myself. Almost immediately, I felt a sense of relief and hope. My mind began to clear, and I started having some good ideas about how to get myself out of the financial mess I had created. She fell on her knees and said, God, I need your help. I can't handle this by myself. Immediately, she feels this sense of relief and hope. That's a God of hope. And what happened? Her mind began to clear. Now, what do you suppose was in her mind? Anxiety, self-condemnation, pride that she had to do it all by herself. All of those could be character defects, couldn't they? So as she felt this sense of hope and relief, her mind begins to clear of all the, that stuff. And she starts having good ideas about how get out of the financial mess. And she says, now, whenever I find myself uptight or bordering on panic, I fall on my knees and ask for God's help. My life is now marked by a series of surrenders, a series of surrenders, and it has never been better. How would you like to go around telling people that your life is marked by a series of surrenders? You know, that's just not American, but it is Christian. And God does call us to surrender everything. What's that song? I surrender all, I surrender all, all to Jesus. I surrender, I surrender all. How about thinking about what she said? thinking about your life being marked by a series of surrenders. And perhaps just like this lady, your life will never be better. So next class is in a couple days. Again, this book is called Drop the Rock. It's wonderful. It has, it's chock full of good ideas. It's by Bill P, Todd W, and Sarah 